Today I am brewing one of the first beer styles that I ever made, American Pale Ale. Hey. What are you doing here? It's not tasting time. I'm Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks, and I have a special guest. Hello. Welcome, Lauren. So normally we'll see you in the tasting mm -hmm. part. Um, how familiar are you with the whole brewing part? I'm not familiar at all, so I kind of want to learn the process of what actually goes into making the beers myself. I heard it that when you watch back these videos, you just fast forward over the whole bit of me making the beer and just watch yourself taste yeah, it. Yeah, I go to the good part, yeah. like when I'm on the screen, so. <laughs> All right, so let's make a start with American Pale Ale. Lauren? Okay, what is this? Yeah, so this is uh, <laughs> some suspicious powder. Yeah, what do I do with it? Um, dump it into the water. In here? Yep. Okay. And then just give it a rinse around so that we can get... Like put it in yeah. there? Yeah. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're just balancing the water. That's Ooh. some water salts. It's warm. Yeah, it's warm. 158 Fahrenheit. Fun. So we get the water fairly warm for the mash. The, okay. The water salts we've added are simply just to balance out the water. So I've added Epsom salt, uh, gypsum and calcium chloride. In addition, we're gonna use some lactic acid to bring the pH down as well. So okay. if you could kindly add three milliliters of lactic acid. So I'm about halfway through my homebrew challenge now. I've done a little bit over 50 beers and I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about some of our favorites, right? So if you're trying to think, well, which beer style shall I brew? Mm -hmm. There's a lot to choose from now. Um, so maybe we can give you some guidance about what your next beer should be. So far, I'd have to say my favorite light one was the one we just did, uh, the Hazy New England IPA. Mm. Um, I like that one. It's more on my taste level. Like I like the kind of hoppiness to it. Um, it wasn't too overpowering. Um, I, I like the haze on it just because that's different as well. So. I think that was definitely my favorite light one. I've quite enjoyed the German lagers mm -hmm. that we did, um, and there were a lot of those, but I think my favorite beer so far has been the German Fest beer. So um, when you think of Oktoberfest, you probably think of Marzen, it's kind of a dark orange, yeah. you know, quite a heavy drinking lager. Um, but actually most Oktoberfests um, serve Fest beer, which is a much lighter version of that, and I'm not sure I'd have tried it, and it was delicious. Yeah. I, I think I was unfortunate that I didn't actually get to try that one, but I did hear so much good about it, mm. and so maybe you need to do it again one day. Yeah, yeah, we have to do that one again for sure. All right, so let's uh, let's get making some beer. What do okay. You think? Yeah. All right, so I'll talk a little bit about what's in this uh, bag of milled grain in a moment, but let's get it added in. Okay. Just the whole thing. Just dump it in. It looks like animal feed. <laughs> Alright. So there's no actual mashing to it. I thought it was like mash, like mashed potatoes. Ah, well, it is a good idea to give the mash... That's a whisk. A, a whisk, <laughs> not a mash, a whisk. So you just take that. Yeah, so what you're doing here is just making sure there's no clumps. If, okay. there's, if it's all clumped up in balls, then it's not going to be very efficient getting the water through it. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, looks good. You mashed. I mashed. Oh, I whisked. You whisked. So what do these numbers mean? Uh, this top number here is the temperature in the mash. I've got a thermometer here that's, okay. that's measuring that. And then this is the temperature that we want to get it to. So if I turn the heat on, I want to heat this up to 152 Fahrenheit. Oh, okay. That's cool. So mash at 152 Fahrenheit. Okay, what about dark beers? I've got to tell you, my favorite dark beer so far has got to be Irish Stout, and that's one of my favorite styles anyway. Mm -hmm. But this one, this one was interesting because for the first time, I didn't serve it on nitro, I just serve it on CO2. Um, and yet, I still got exactly what I'd want out of a, a dry Irish Stout. Mm -hmm. So very much like a Guinness mouthfeel, um, absolutely 
delicious. I took a great liking to the oatmeal stout. Mm. Um, I was super surprised with the taste of it, the how light it tasted, because not a big fan of dark beers. I think they're too heavy, but that one was just on the top of all the ones that we tried. Now, you might think of American Pale Ale as being a less hoppy version of an IPA, but this style actually has its origins from English Pale Ale. And whereas English Pale Ale emphasizes earthy and floral tones, American Pale Ale focuses more on citrus and fruit. Now, I'm going to build a beer here with an original gravity of 1054, giving about a 5% beer. And the grist for this one is reasonably simple. So I'm going to start with two row malt, and that's going to make up 81% of my grist. To that, to add a little bit of biscuity sweetness, I'm going to add 9% of caramel 20. I'm also going to add 5% each of victory malt and carapils. All right, got another one for you. We've done a ton of British beers, mm -hmm. and given our heritage, we should pick a favorite. My most favorite one was the Irish Red Ale. That was a pretty beer. Yeah, um, it looked great. It tasted great. It wasn't too overpowering. It was like a little bit malty, a little bit like biscuity, and it went down real smooth. So I, that's definitely, yeah, that's definitely my favorite one. Yeah, that was a really nice one. My favorite um, has been the Best Bitter. Mm -hmm. So I generally like Best Bitters anyway, but I just sort of discovered that I really, really like Best Bitter when it has a little bit of pale chocolate malt added to it, which is something that Ringwood Best has, which is my dad's favorite beer style. So I decided to incorporate it in the Best Bitter that we did. And it's only, I think, 2% of the ingredients, but it just makes all the difference. So the mash is done, just draining down now and bringing to a boil. Lauren, when we bring to boil, do you know what goes in next? Is it hops? It's hops. Ah! It's hops, yep. Yeah. So with this beer, uh, we're going to get an IBU of about 40. So relatively hoppy for this sort of gravity, uh, but not, not too, too overboard. Um, I'm going to add as my bittering hop, warrior hop. 10 minutes from the end, I'm going to repeat uh, Warrior again. I'm going to add a bit more Warrior in along with Amarillo and Cascade and then uh, at Flame Out Amarillo and Cascade we'll go back in a third time. All right so let's get this green basket out. Okay. That was, some hops. Sorry that was a lot of words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a lot of hops. Yeah. <laughs> We've done a lot of beer styles that are not ones you drink every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think we've both tasted beers that we've never even heard of before, right? Yeah. So what's your favorite beer style that you never heard of? Um, so my favorite one was probably the Australian Sparkling Ale. Mm. Um, not only was that a fun experience to drink out of your Firmzilla, um, it also tasted really good. I remember saying that it was a very summery drink. It was like perfect for being outside and it'd be hot and it, was, yeah, that was my favorite one. Is that the one where we did the awesome Australian accents? Crikey, Firmzilla. So what about you? What was the best style that you'd never heard of? Hella's Bock turned out to be my favorite mm. beer style, which is particularly interesting because when I tasted it with Brian, I didn't like it. Mm. But that beer aged for a little while and I came back to it when it was about two months old and it really developed. And it just goes to show that even if the beer doesn't come out exactly as you were hoping it would do, Initially, some of these beers, especially the higher gravity ones with mm -hmm. a bit of age, really, really come good. It's a few hours later now. The boil was done. I cooled, transferred into this fermenter and um, needed to put it in my chest freezer uh, for a few hours just to bring it down to yeast pitching temperature at 68 Fahrenheit, but now we are ready to add the yeast into the fermenter. 
Brewing beer is thirsty work. Now I have one more question for you, Lauren. Yeah. So we've added in so far water. Okay. Malt. Yep. And hops. Okay. There's one thing we still need to add to make beer. Yeast. Yeast. <laughs> yeast it is. So what I've got here is a starter that I made earlier. This is Y East 1332 uh, Northwest Ale. This is um, a, a yeast that will really accentuate the multi profile and the fruity profile of any beer that you add it to, which is exactly the two things that we want to promote in this beer, given the malt bill and given the hot schedule. So would you like the honor of uh, giving the yeast some food? Some yeast, some that means food. pouring it in. The yeast are going to eat the sugars. Okay, sure. In here. <laughs> okay. You want to catch a flight or you want to spend the night? Tell me what you want. Well, thank you, Lauren, for brewing with me today. Thank you. Now you're going to have to watch the whole video. Uh, you're right, I do. <laughs> Yay. So we'll give this one a few weeks at 68 Fahrenheit and see how it turns out in the tasting. Yay. See you then. So you're excited to try a beer that you had a hand in brewing? I am really excited. Yeah, so let's take a look at our American Pale Ale. What do you think? Um, it is very light and golden color, um, which I expected it to be. Um, very bubbly, I noticed that while pouring it. Um, yeah, I gave it a good amount of carbonation. I like these beers fizzy. Yeah. Uh, the head on it, when we I first poured it, was very, it's a light head on it as well. It didn't last too long, but it looks great. Mm. So. Okay, for smell. A little bit of a fruity hop to it. Yeah, so that's the Amarillo, the Cascade, um, coming through, I think. Hmm. Let's give it a try. Okay. I have been really looking forward to to trying this beer. Mm -hmm. I love the style of American pale ale uh -huh. because it has hoppy freshness to it without being too overboard and too bitter. And it has a little bit of uh, an English malt character to it when I think it's done well. This is all of those things to me. This is exactly what I was looking for. I have, to, pale ale. I have to agree. Um, like the APA I think is like the younger sibling of an IPA. It's got all the characteristics, but it's a bit lighter in tasting um, and not as overpowering. Uh, and it's definitely all in there. It's really good. Now, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I think it might be really good because I had a hand in <laughs> we, we talked about a lot about our favorite beers in this episode. Um, what's your least favorite beer so far? So there haven't been that many that I didn't really like or wasn't a fan of, um, but I gotta say the highest up there would be the Wee Heavy. Um, I just wasn't a fan of that style. It was a bit too like sweet and overbearing for me. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminded me of Brandy. Yeah, I, I would say with Wee Heavy, give it a chance. Like, try it again in six months. I've, it's it's actually underneath the, oh, the wall here, okay. uh, aging. So yeah, it definitely wasn't good when we tried it. I definitely, yeah, no, I would try it again. Um, a lot, you said aging, a lot of people said aging, like yeah. it'll get better with time and it didn't have time to mature. So I'll try it again. Okay, what about yours? Least favorite? Well, it's, for me, it's easy. It's that damn smoke beer, <laughs> that damn smoke beer. Um, I mean, it's totally my own fault. I went overboard. I put way, way too much smoke malt in mm -hmm. um, for the style, and it just became this smoke bomb, completely overpowering. It's of all the beers that I've done. It's well, you know, sometimes you you have a sip of a beer and you're like, oh, I don't think I really like this, and then you know you get a bit further you down more, the glass, like, and then oh, it's, it's like, oh, it's all right, it's all right. This is the only beer, the smoke beer, is the only beer I couldn't finish a single glass. It of. made me gag. <laughs> yeah. It's because there was too much smoke stuff, as I have complained multiple times to him. Like, I want you to redo the beer with less smoke just to see what it should taste like. 
I'm gonna have a whole one of those for my bubble bath beer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't be. 